So we have been following breaking news this morning. The U.S. is recommending pausing the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine so uh, the CDC and the FDA can investigate reports of potentially dangerous blood clots. This morning, Dr. Gotham Desai from Kansas City University joins us. Uh, good morning, Dr. Desai. Good morning, Abby. Thank you so much for talking about this topic. I know it's pretty fresh for everybody. Uh, so are U.S. officials being overly cautious or should we be concerned about this single shot dose? You know, I think the officials are doing the right thing and they're being the right amount of cautious. If I were a patient, I wouldn't want this necessarily to happen to me. But overall, we've given almost 7 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And from those 6.8 million patients that received that, we've had these six reported cases that have been you know, in female patients between the ages of 15 and 50. Is it possible, since there are only six reported cases, that in the coming days we could hear from more people um, who find out, you know, maybe they've had a headache or, or whatever the symptoms are, and they have gone in and, and gotten checked out? Is that, is that possible in the coming days? It's possible, but most of the patients in this, uh, out of these six patients had these symptoms within less than two weeks after receiving the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And this is a very rare condition overall. Basically, it causes a blood clot in the brain. Some patients will have a headache, some will have seizures, uh, some will have you know, different elevated pressures inside of the head. But overall, it's a, it's a rare thing. And a lot of times patients have another factor, so they may be pregnant, they may have cancer, they may be taking oral contraceptives, or they may have a genetic condition that makes them more disposed to have clots. So patients should not stop their medication without talking to their provider. But if they have any concerns, you know, like shortness of breath, a severe new headache, swelling or pain in the leg, they should go in and get checked out. Okay. Uh, and and switching gears here a little bit, a lot of people who were infected with COVID-19 are now waiting to get vaccinated, thinking their antibodies are there, they're going to last, and some even think maybe they would have too many antibodies. Is that reasonable? And how long should people who had COVID wait to get vaccinated? Sure. Well, a couple of different things with that. So if you're pretty sure that you had COVID and you had the symptoms, you didn't feel well, you lost your sense of smell or taste, then... It was documented by a test, you know, you can probably wait 30 days if the COVID vaccine is in short supply in your region so that other patients who need it can get it. But if you're in an area where it's readily available, then you should probably go ahead and get it. Sometimes patients have a, what's known as false positive, where the test says that they are positive for COVID, but in real life they're not. So they may have a false sense of security thinking that they have it. Um, so unless you've been treated with plasma or with antibodies, then you should probably go ahead and get your vaccine even if you did have COVID. Okay. Uh, and COVID has affected people in a lot of different ways. Uh, some may be more anxious. Uh, are there any tips on how to handle that anxiety and when should someone seek help? Sure. So I think that this has definitely affected people in many different ways. And I like to talk about the body, mind, and spirit for patients with anxiety. So for the body, you know, like we discussed last week, perhaps getting up and doing some exercise will help with that. Or even if you're having a little moment of anxiety, just taking a big breath in for three seconds and then letting it out over six seconds can help with that. For the mind, sometimes just putting that cell phone down, turning the TV off, turning the radio off for a little while, and taking a break and watching what goes into your mind will be helpful as well. And then for treating the spirit, just reach out to friends, families, you know, there's online support groups as well. But if these feelings persist and you're not able to get out of bed or they interfere with your daily activities, if you have thoughts about hurting yourself, or somebody else, then you should definitely uh, reach out. You know, and if you have the thoughts about hurting yourself or somebody else, definitely call 911. Otherwise, make an appointment with your provider and talk to them about these issues. Dr. Desai, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We covered a wide range of topics, and we certainly appreciate you joining us. Hey, you're welcome, Abby. Have a great day. You too. Thank you.